start with verse 14. Now listen, you will say, tomorrow, I mean today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this and that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Let's pray. Lord God, we uh, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have left your word for us to uh, follow, to understand, and uh, to allow us to guide, to live in accordance to your will. Thank you as well for the Holy Spirit that uh, gives us the wisdom and uh, the ability to understand your word. And I pray as we uh, unpack your word, I pray that you will speak to us and allow us to live what we are hearing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, the book of James, if you will uh, notice, uh, he uh, wrote this letter to uh, the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered around uh, the world. And uh, it is very straightforward, the book of James, because it tells us what to do as followers of Christ. And in this section, we will try to see the things that he has seen and he wanted the people to see and understand, and we can apply it even today. Uh, James 4.13, it says, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. You will see here the presumption of man, right? The presumption of man is dreadful and arrogant. Tomorrow they will want to go to the city, spend a year there, carry on the business, make money as if nothing will happen, as if their plans will go in accordance to what they have planned. Tomorrow, as if they will be alive, as if they will be healthy, there will be no emergency, no sickness, no sudden death. Tomorrow is for them for the taking. They will go to the city, the weather will be good. We just had a very strong uh, rain. Brother uh, here got wet. <laughs> he didn't even know that it will rain that hard. Good thing he brought an umbrella. But these are the things that can happen that we do not know. And this businessman, apparently, they were very arrogant into thinking and making their plans as if things will happen the way they, they planned. There will be no accident. They shall arrive exactly as planned. Spend a year there. Of course, lodging, their thinking, will be available. They can afford the price. One time I uh, went to the Philippines. I stopped by Tokyo. And I did that uh, long-term layover. And I went out the airport, went to the city. And the hotel was like $500. <laughs> I cannot even afford like a $100 hotel. So uh, I went out of the city. I took a cab and went away from the city because outside the city, it's more affordable. But these are the things that we do not know. But apparently, these brothers here think they will plan this and that, and it will happen. No disasters, no wars, no thieves, no robbers, no rioting. And they thought they will trade goods and it will be available. The price will be fine, the price will be right, no shortages, no, no damages, no city regulations where they will go. And they can 
do about their business as they are planning. And they presume that they will make money out of it. They will spend uh, a year there, make profits, and make lots of money. Now, what is wrong here? We know that planning, of course, is not, the, planning per se is not wrong. But we will find out later but, that their arrogance is the one that makes this planning wrong. Amen? Matter of fact, the Bible also tells us to make plans for the future. We are stewards of the resources that has given us. And part of being a good steward is make good planning. Okay? In Proverbs 6, 6 to 8, I read, Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food or at harvest. So you see, even the ant makes plans and does something about his future. So this is saying that planning per se is not bad or wrong. Proverbs 27, 23. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds. Psalms 24. May he give you the desire of your heart. It make all your plans succeed. So planning is not bad. But again, it's the attitude of making plans in an arrogant way. Making plans on your own. It's like you think that things will go right on your own uh, ways and understanding. Matter of fact, the Bible teaches that teaches us that we make plans even for our children. John 14, 3. And if you, I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. See, even Jesus made plans for us, his children. He went ahead of us and prepared for us for our eternal residence. So there is nothing wrong with planning. Um, matter of fact, we have developed here a culture of planning even for our children, our children's children. And that is very wise. A lot of the professors I have at Trinity they are descendants of uh, ministers of old. They are descendants of missionaries in China. So these are the things that sometimes we undermine. The children that we are seeing here today, we probably won't see them being missionaries in the future or leaders of the church. But when we are gone out of this world, they will be the leaders of this church. They will be the one continuing to carry the torch. Amen? And we have seen that. Even the descendants of Jonathan Edwards, they were the pioneers of uh, ministries around the world. Of course, stewardship requires planning. We know that we are a steward of the time that God has given us. We are a steward of the money, the resources that God has given us. We are stewards of the gifts and abilities. This morning we talked about gifts and abilities. We are a steward of those. We are even more so important. We are the stewards of the gospel. Amen? Look, in Matthew, in Matthew 25, 21, I read, his master said to him, well done. Good and faithful slave, you were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. See? God will be way appreciative of us if we will use the things that he has given us. It is not just for us to keep our time, our money, our gifts and abilities, and the gospel, we are stewards of those. And God will be joyful if we are going to make use of them. Amen? Proverbs 21, 20. Precious treasure and oil, 
are in the dwelling of a wise person, but a foolish man consumes them. You see, it's funny how a lot of us wish that we have this money and that money, and yet we do not know how to handle them. So be careful what you wish for. If you'll be given more, more will be what will be expected of you. And of course, God is not foolish. He will not give you a resource that you cannot handle. Matthew 25, 9, 9, 25, 29, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough, but from the one who does not have even what he will, will be taken away from him. Amen. So let's just, you have to think of this. I mean, you think uh, your blessing is for you, for your keeping. Think again. You are blessed, we are blessed to be a blessing of, to others. Amen? Great power comes with great responsibility. Spider-Man. <laughs> but it is true, right? I think I've heard Manny Pacquiao said this too <laughs> one time in his interview. You see, the world is copying what the Bible is saying, us, tell, telling. But it is, it is right. I mean... The more, the more resources, the more gifts that you have, the more will be required of you. But if you do not know how to share it, you do not know how to handle it, if you're not a good steward of it, it will be taken away from you. And moving along, we'll go to James 4.14. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Yes, you and I, we do not know what will happen tomorrow. But God knows what will happen tomorrow. He knows our future. Tomorrow may be either good or bad. We make good preparation and good planning. But still, we don't know with certainty what will happen. And we all know this. Looking back through our lives, we make plans here and there. It didn't happen. We uh, thought everything will be okay, but it didn't happen. When I was younger, I thought I will be the next mayor of my town. <laughs> it didn't happen. Um, No matter how ironclad our plans are, we do not know what will happen. Remember the rich young ruler? He had a lot of money. He thought he will keep making, he will keep making more money. But God said, you fool, did you know that I will get your life tonight? I mean, it can happen to, to the best of us. We really don't know. And I'm sure you will agree with that. That no matter how tight our plan, or how tight our plans are, we do not know what, what, what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Wow. Our life on earth is just a mist. Just a spirit of time. Very, very short will not even define it. It's just a mist. You will notice in other parts of the Bible it will describe it as a shadow. Proverbs, I mean Psalm 102.11 My days are like the evening shadow. I wither like a grass. Job 8-9 for we were born only yesterday and know nothing. And um, our days on earth are but a shadow. Shadow it means it's a vain show. Your sh shadow can appear and disappear and just like that. It doesn't even have a form. A shadow is. You see, our shadow doesn't have a form. 
we on earth are just a shadow. But praise God for Christ, we will have a glorified body in heaven. That will not be a shadow anymore because it's permanent. But our life here on earth is just a shadow, temporary. It doesn't even have a form. Chronicles, First Chronicles 29, 15, we are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as we were all our ancestors, our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Wow. Our time on earth is just a shadow. Let's, let us beat this to the ground. Our time on earth being just a shadow, just a speck of time. You know, time deceives us. We thought that we have all the time on earth. I am studying church history right now, and I like to see things that happen in a timeline. So I brought a rope. Instead of video, I brought a rope. But let's imagine that this is our timeline. Ooh. So you see, sometimes we are deceived. I mean, a lot of time we are deceived. If you compare an hour for this one, you are here, you think one hour is long. Tonight, Brother Gerald's teaching will be one and a half hour. Ah, that will be a long time. Before you know it, it's almost 30 minutes gone. And before you know it, Yay, we're done. And you look back, whoa, did he teach? Man, so the, we are deceived into thinking that we have all the time. But then, just what the Bible says, it's just a shadow, it's just a mist. It will disappear before your eyes. We came here this morning, oh, church again. Let's compare a Sunday. Church again, and late. Before you know it, we're already almost at the end of the day. And you look back, whoa, Sunday's done already. We go back home and say, whoa, where did the weekend go? It's Monday again, work day again. See? That's how you can see and really understand that time is... It seems that time is forever, but no. And then Monday comes, Monday is low. Before you know it, it's Friday. And the week is gone. But on Monday morning, it's like, ah. Oh, it's hard to wake up, go, go to work. But that just happens real quick. We are, uh, we are on a uh, fasting and prayer. You can tell that I'm weak because we're already on the 14th day of my fast. But you see, when we fast, right, I will not eat for a day. I will spend time with the Lord. But if you will think of it, oh, a day, some people will say, ah, oh, I will die. If I don't eat the calorie, I will die. Genesis will say, I will die without my McDonald's. <laughs> but if you are already half of the day, oh, I can bear it. My stomach is growling, but I can bear it. And then before you know it, the day is done. Oh, I'm done with my day's fasting. So you see, time is... Let's try to understand time here, Okay? For me, one day, it's okay, I'm used to one day. Two days, it's okay, I'm used to two days. Three days, ah, oh, don't talk to me, Genesis. I will slap you. I'm hungry, I'm weak. But after the third day and fourth day, oh, my eyes are bright. 
I'm surprised I'm not hungry anymore. And then, before you know it, I'm already on my 14th day. Whoa, see? But when I was there, I was like, whoa. whoa. It's hard to think forward. It seems like forever. But if you look back, wow, 14 days is gone already. Why do we fast, by the way? Of course, we fast not to twist the hand of God and to force him to hear us, but we fast to align ourselves to the Holy Spirit, to the will of God. Amen? It's us. We're not trying to correct God. We are trying to correct our ways. That's why we deprive ourselves of food. A month, compare it to my rope, a year, wow. We are already talking about summer camp, as if it was only yesterday when we had that, right? Time flies really fast, looking behind. But looking forward, it looks like we have a lot of time. College education. For those of you who are still starting it, you probably will be like, oh, four years, five years. That's a long time. I want to leave home. I want to make money on my own. That's what you're thinking, right? <laughs> I hope you're including in your plans. I will give money to my parents. And then, whoa, you're already in the second year. And before you know it, you're making money and you're writing your check to dad. Here we go. Praise God, right? <sighs> so time really is, it is really true that it is just a vapor. It is just a mist. It is just a shadow, a speck of time. Look back at our church history. I mean, we're already like years and years, two decades more than two decades already. Wow, as if it was only yesterday. As if it was only yesterday. <sighs> Let's compare our life. I pray, maybe most of us would hope and pray that we will reach how many years? Brother Lawrence, 80 years, 90 years, right? Let's compare it to a rope toward my timeline. <laughs> when we were young, we want to be old right away, right? <laughs> we want to be a teenager right away. And then we're already here, and then, ooh. Oh, I'm middle-aged. Where did my younger years go? My mom used to tell me, there's still a child in you. <laughs> Because I play with, uh, you know, kids' toys. I play around. And he keeps thinking, maybe he was deprived of his childhood. <laughs> he didn't enjoy being a child. But before you know it, you're already at halfway. I'm 44 right now. Oh, God, I don't know how much longer I will live. <laughs> right? Before you know it, boom. You'll start counting down. Oh, one more year. Is it? You stop counting your birthdays. You start counting how much year is left, <laughs> right? And you're already here. It's like, how many more years is left? Oh, where did my life go? So it's just a mist. It's just a shadow. It's just a vapor. See? So, knowing that, that our life is just Short, it's just a mist. What do we do with our lives? Brother Val said, use your gift, not tomorrow, right now. Before you know it, your life is gone. Right? So number one, we ought to do what we are supposed to do now. We ought to do what we are called for now. We do not say, I will sing 
tomorrow. Our, our life is short. It's just a mess. Kathleen is mid-40s. And she's, she went back to her. She's going, uh, she's taking a uh, uh, voice lesson and guitar lesson. <laughs> and she's, she's sometimes uh, shy when she goes to school because she, she thinks she's the oldest one in there. <laughs> uh, she's singing with, you know, teenager, little kids. But you see, that's why, I mean, it's good for her. She, it's not yet too late. It's not yet late. For, but can you imagine if she already started it when she realized that she had that gifting? She'd probably be doing more right now. Let us not wait until when we cannot stand and be a greeter. Welcome to Lion's Heart. Right? I mean, it's too late. Do it while you're young. I want to be security, but I cannot run. Let's do it right now while we, we have the strength, while we are young. Remember, Pastor Rose kept saying, I mean, you cannot be sent to the world when you're already old and cannot climb the hills, cannot even catch up with the song. <laughs> right? So, let's do it right now. Our time on earth is just a mist. Do not say, I will serve tomorrow. I will serve tomorrow when I lose one pound weight. <laughs> let's do it right now. Amen? God planted something in your heart. Do it right now. You want to, I joined the military when I was 28 years old, and you can just imagine I was running with 19 years old, 20 years old. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> well, of course, I joined late because I was late coming in here. But if you have something, the desire that you like to do it right now, do it before you get old. I'm practicing Krav Maga right now, but I'm too old. They will just kick me and they will be thrown away. It's like, ah, I get mad, but I cannot do anything. I'm old. I watch a lot of mixed martial arts play. Man, I want to be with that one, but man, I'm too old. I want to be Joseph. I want to run like Joseph, but I'm too old. You want to be a millionaire? Start saving right now. <laughs> you want to be a successful businessman? Start learning how to be a good businessman. You want to be a nurse? Align what you're doing right now for with being a nurse. You want to be something someday? God planted you this, this desire in your heart. Do something right now. Do not wait for tomorrow because, again, our life is just a mist. It's just a shadow. Before you know it, oh, I'm too old. A lot of my peers right now keep saying, oh, you are so patient. You're still in school. I'm too old already. Do it right now. Before you know it, you are done with what you're supposed to do. Amen? Number two, we ought to do what we are doing with excellence because we do not have all the time. We think we have all the time to be better next time. You are a doorkeeper and you say, I'll do better tomorrow. Man, be better today. Smile today. Do not smile tomorrow because tomorrow might not come. When Brother Darren comes in, smile to him and say, I welcome, Brother Darren. <laughs> Amen? Don't be like, I'll be better tomorrow. Right? Security, if you're security, be sharp. Don't say, I'll be sharp tomorrow. We got to do it right now. We got to do the things 
that we are called for in excellence right now. For students, study well. Do not say, I will study tomorrow. And the next day is the exams. I mean, study now. I, uh, when I finished my bachelor's degree in accountancy, I didn't have the confidence to take the board back in the Philippines. Because I remember when I, was in, when I was in college, I used to just bring a sheet of paper in class, and that's my notebook. And I will just, you know, stick it in there. I look cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made most of my classes. I passed it. But when I graduated, Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. Accountancy, wow. And then I look at the questions in the board exam. It's like, what are these? <laughs> That's why I never had the confidence to take my board back then. I had to do a lot of preparation again before that. That's why you college students... Study right now. Uh, don't wait till finals, weeks before finals, before you study, a day before the exams, before you study. You think you might get away with it, but what about the things that you will have learned? What about the things you, that you could use for the rest of your life that you failed to learn? Amen? So don't be smart that we think you can just study before finals. Amen? Especially those professions that required board exams. You make your preparation while you are in school, not during review. Amen? Colossians 3, 23 to 4. Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will, be, you will receive the reward of inheritance from the Lord. You deserve, you serve the Lord Christ. See? While we're at it, we should do it enthusiastically because it is for the Lord. Number three. Since we know that our life on earth is just a mist, we ought to get rid of the distractions that prevent us from doing what God has called us to do. If you will notice the book of James, James 1, 2 to 18, it talks about not giving up on trials and distractions. So James look at this and said, this is what you are doing. It's a distraction of what you're supposed to be doing. Trials and destruction comes, and we should not give in to them. And it does come, but there are things that are self-inflicted. Self-inflicted trials, self-inflicted disasters, dis uh, distractions, and we all know this. For me, for example, I used to be an alcoholic, so I tried to stay away from alcohols. Sometimes I pass by Jewel in by the alcohol area and look at them. <laughs> but uh, you see, if you know that you have a weakness for such things, you stay away from them. If I go back home, we, we, our tribe is, was, uh, is known for being the philosophers of the mountains because they can make fun of everything and anything in under the sun. And I stay away from gathering with them because, you know, self comes back. I'm sure you know that already. Even in our most behaved times, our humanity shows up. Our self shows up. And praise God for the Holy Spirit, we get convicted. But a lot of times, it is already after. 
our self or our humanity has manifested itself. So, be watchful. There are self-inflicted trials, self-inflicted distractions. We tempt ourselves sometimes. James 1, 19 to 27 talks about listening and doing. Again, it goes back to self. We simply do not listen. And this is one distraction for us not walking in our calling. We think we can do things on our own. We simply do not listen. James 2, 1 to 13 talks about doing favoritism. It is a distraction in the body of Christ. Favoritism. James 2, 14 to 25 talks about us not acting on our faith. We are not acting on our faith. James 3, 1 to 12 talks about us not taming the tongue. There's a good section in there talking about your tongue. Brother Val made an illustration this morning about the poodle. <laughs> See, so we have to be watchful. Amen? Uh, James 3, 13 to 18 talks about the wisdom from above and wisdom from below. We talked about this the last time I taught, where we have to know where we are getting our wisdom. Because this world, we think everything is fine. We think we are making the right decisions, but it's the wisdom from below. So this James addressed are the things that distracts us from walking into our calling. Your calling or your part in the body of Christ will be manifested in, in you yourself. It's not something that's automatic. It's not something that you copy from another. Brother Val said, it's unique. I mean, you will know. As you follow Christ, you will know. I keep putting off uh, going to seminary, learning more about the word of Christ. I was uh, baptized by the Holy Spirit 2011. And I had, suddenly I had this thirst for knowledge. And I want to know more about God. But I kept putting it off, putting it off. Did my master's in, other, in the secular world. But it still, it kept coming back to me. And I remember talking to a pastor and he said, you will know because it will keep coming back on you. It will keep bothering you. If God has called you to do something, Trust me, it will keep, he will keep reminding you of it. Uh, like Kathleen, for example, she, I keep telling her if I was the one who's gifted with music, I'll probably be volunteering here and there. I will sing, I will sing. But God has been prodding her for years, and that's why she's following through with the, uh, what she believe is her calling. Now, let us compare my rope to eternity. You know, God is the alpha and the omega, right? God created time itself. So he is not bound by beginning or end or Alpha or Omega, because he created time itself. But for us, humans, we are time-bound. We are within this line of eternity. But for us humans, you see, eternity has no beginning and has no end. 
So you can just imagine that this rope is, whoa, it's all the way down there because time for us has no beginning and no end. And so if you compare our 90 years old on earth to eternity, we cannot even see that 90 years in this timeline of eternity. Can you see that? So our time on earth is really small. Even so small if you compare it to eternity. No beginning, no end. Our 90 years, 120 years on earth is, you cannot even see it. It's so small. It is just a speck. And you see, sometimes we lose track of that one. We think we have all our days. The world thinks they have all their lives to give back to God. Some say, I remember this youngsters back home, they would say, I only pray when my life is 50-50. <laughs> you are right, as if you know when you're almost dying. Sometimes we lose track. We are so concerned of our 120 years on earth and we forget about eternity. We forget that what we are doing here right now, this 120 years on earth, will determine where we will go in eternity. And we forget about that. Amen? Amen? We want to take all the pleasures on earth. We, hey, eternity is forever. Mind what you are doing right now. Otherwise, you will spend eternity in hell. Amen? Can you see that? It's just a sp eternity. We forget. We lose track of it. Sometimes... We say, uh, God is good because he has given me a new car. Amen, praise God. Now, what if he didn't give you a new car? Is he not good already? Hey, don't forget eternity. We have eternity. Your car is nothing with eternity that is given us. Amen? Oh, praise God, I have a good job. Six-figure salary. Praise God, God is really, 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 really good. What if you, are not, you don't have a job? God, is he still good? Of course he is. He has eternity for us. Staying with him in eternity. Amen? Oh, God, thank you so much. I have a brand new Honda. <laughs> Man, let's, let's not forget the fact that first and foremost, God paid for our sins for us to live with him in eternity. Amen? We lose track of that one. In our life, even suffering, we blame God for our suffering. When our, hey, our suffering is only here. Remember Bishop Jimenez when she came here? And, uh, you know, she told us about some people asking her, how come the unbelievers are progressing? They're making good money. They're having a good life. And we believers, we are driving beat up cars. We don't have money for our children for good food, for steak. <laughs> and, he's, and she said, remember? Hey, brothers and sisters, because that is all what they will have. Amen? For us believers, we have eternity in Christ. I hope you see that. 
So next time you're driving with somebody, you really don't know if that is all what he will have. See what I'm saying? Ah, gives me, gives me hope. I'm weak, but I'm strong. <laughs> so let, let us not lose track of that one. Sometimes we blame, we blame, we blame Enoch, right? He exchanged his birthright for a soup. I mean, really weak. He's all. We blame him, right, for exchanging his birthright for a soup. But then for us, we are exchanging our eternity for something that we will take pleasure of only for a short time. We. We are. Uh, a lot of a lot of people. Uh, exchange their eternity for short period pleasure. So brothers and sisters, God is good because he gave us eternal life. Our blessings in trials on earth is nothing compared to the reward of having an eternal life with Jesus. Let us not lose sight of this. Let us not forget eternity. So amidst all the chaos in this world, don't be discouraged. Difficulties that we uh, go through in life on earth, it'll just for a short period of time. Difficulties of going to school, it's just for four years, five years for most. But the reward is for the rest of your life. Amen? My, I think my daughter already knew this uh, illustration of mine. She was thinking through, when I finish college by this year, when can I start to date? <laughs> and I said, don't worry, daughter. Before you know it, you have all the time to date, but not right now. Because you see, when you're here, you think that, oh, I want to date already. But sooner or later, you'll be like, ah, it's so fast. What about the Great Commission? Barnabal talked about gifts and abilities this morning. What about the Great Commission? Are we supposed to be part of it? Amen, right? Do you expect Pastor Rose to bring in new believers here and there, right here on church? No, right? The concept is we ought to multiply. My professor, an old professor, he will just sit there and teach. He's so full of wisdom. And then one, one day, he, tested, he talked about his neighbor dying. And he said he went to the funeral. And he said, it dawned on me. I have never really shared my faith to this guy. It's been his neighbor for years and years. So, brothers and sisters, we are part of the Great Commission. Do not think that it will take us a lot of time before we can share our faith to the people around us. Amen? We don't have all time to. Before you know it, they'll be gone. And you miss that opportunity. Let us not miss that opportunity to be part of the Great Commission. I was very surprised when uh, one of my professors told us, I am class with, with, uh, classmate with a bunch of MDiv students, young MDiv students. And these are future pastors of the churches. And he, he said, this is, the fa this is a fact. Most of you will not bring in new believers to your churches. 
I was like, wow, this is really a surprise. Because pastors are being trained to take care of their flock. On a contemporary church, traditional church, what they do is to make sure that they take care of their flock. They teach them the word, do this and that. They really don't go out there and be missionaries. They take care of their flock. So that's why you should take it as a burden, brothers and sisters, to be a part of the Great Commission in every way, in any way you can. Me and my family, we try our very best to, uh, because I have a burden for the people in the mountain provinces of the Philippines. You know, these people are sincere in the things that they do. They are, they are, uh, when they make decisions that they will follow things, they will really follow it. But the sad thing is they do not know the gospel. And so I used to think that I would just go there and, you know, go to these churches and say hi and teach what I, what I know. But it dawned on me that, hey, we have to go back out there and win believers for Christ. We are part of this. We are part of the Great Commission. Share it to your neighbors. Share it to the people around you. Amen? Our life is just a speck. We don't have all the time. We're not like Hindus who will have a afterlife. And we'll say, we'll do it afterlife. No. We'll do it right now. We'll do it here. Amen? We share our gifts. We walk into our calling. Amen? We follow through with the vision right now rather than tomorrow. If you have millions right now, give it. <laughs> Don't wait till tomorrow. Amen? Uh, difficulties too. Don't be, don't be discouraged if you have difficulties. Those are just temporary. Eternity is for us. Eternity with Christ. So if we have difficulties, don't worry, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Fasting alone, you will think, most people, I will die if I will not eat. I'm still alive for 10 days after. Difficulties, it will go by. One of the toughest things I went through is uh, boot camp. <laughs> Brother Joseph will go to boot camp. Pray for him because he might have the physical ability to deal with it, but they will play with your mind. He will be exposed to a lot of cursing, fire crack here and there. <laughs> and it will be really tough for him knowing that he grew up in church and people around him are unbelievers and they have a different notion of how things work. But even then, that will be just a few months of your time. Me, I'm still reaping the benefits of being a veteran. But when I was there, man, I like to fly out. I like to disappear. A lot of my fellow soldiers went AWO during booth camp because they couldn't they could have bear with it. Some, some of my buddies will be wearing civilian clothes underneath the uniform. And when they have a chance, they run away. But man, if you endure it, you'll come out of it. Wow, you will reap the benefits. So even for us, you feel awkward in sharing your faith. Don't worry. If he doesn't, Accept it. Go to the next one. Go to the next person. Amen? We have these difficulties, challenges that we have are, are only temporary. Yeah, eternity. Eternity ahead of us with Christ. Amen? Moving on. 
on uh, James 4.15. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. <coughs> you see? So planning is not what's wrong. It's not including God's will on their plans that is wrong. You see, saying in the Lord's will is prevalent in the Bible. Paul used it a lot of times. If you go to Acts 18 to 21, but as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus. 1 Corinthians 4.19, I read, But I will come to you very soon, if the Lord is willing. And then I will find out not only how this, these arrogant people are talking, but what power they, they have. 1 Corinthians 16.7, For I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord permits. Acts 21.14, when he would not be dissuaded, he gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. Hebrews 6.3, and God permitting, we will do so. You see, their problem was they were making plans without God in the equation. That is what we do most of the time. We only include God after the fact. We only ask God for help when we are already sinking. We only ask God for guidance after we made our move. But see here, this businessman should have made plans and acknowledged the fact that whatever you do, whatever you plan for, it depends on God's will. God's will. So we should try to bring that back in our vocabulary to put us into consciousness that everything has to be done acknowledging the fact that no matter how wise, how good, how smart, how good-looking we are, it still depends on God. If he does, wills it, it will happen. Amen? So this was their problem. They were just doing their plans, doing about their things without acknowledging God. James 4.16, as it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. We are arrogant. We have this degree. We have these qualifications. We have this experience. And we think we can conquer the world. In the Philippines, they always say, I have an MBA. My bakrako. <laughs> I don't care if where you came from, who you are, I have an MBA. I have a bakar. Man. I was asked one time on my job, wow, you're promoted. You must know somebody. And I'm thinking to myself, I have a bucker. Amen? Let God be our bucker in everything that you do. Amen? Um, Kathleen's job, they, because uh, they're bought out, and then uh, they fired seven programmers already. They just went in there thinking that they're going to do about their regular day jobs, and then all of a sudden, HR gathered them and say, sorry, time to go. 
And the sad thing is uh, a lot of them are like uh, 28 years already there. They're almost at the retiring age. And they were just let go. And, and the funny thing is, I mean, it's not funny, but you know what happened at Aurora? A couple of weeks before that happened, the Aurora thing happened where the guy who aspired was just kid people in there. And so when they fired these seven programmers, everybody was on alert. They had to just you know, escort them out. No fanfare like, oh, thank you for being in service for the company for like so many years. They just made sure that they were out of the building. And it's sad what's happening in our country today. Man. But anyways, and then they were, uh, they were given a, because uh, her position is being eliminated uh, October this year. So they, they already know that. And then uh, they gave them paperwork to sign that if you can stay until the October, you'll, you'll give, uh, get a certain bonus because you didn't leave right away. Because some people are already leaving. But then she noticed that her date is different. She's one of the three programmers who were allowed to stay beyond October until sometime next year. Uh, it's still a short period, but it's still, I mean, and what struck me most was her testimony saying that her supervisor, when she went to ask, how come my date is not October when everybody's October? And then her supervisor told her that, I know that you have faith and that you have God's favor. What the testimony? Amen? Even the supervisor, I don't even know if she's a Christian, acknowledges that fact. So it is really awesome if your backer is God. Amen? Man, it's, she still ends uh, sometime next year, but what are the chances that she'll be moved to a different position because she's the one of the only three of the few uh, that, uh, were, uh, that was not let go. So let God be our backer. Amen? And I think they know that because if whatever happens, they know that Kathleen, whether she will be removed or not, she will be taken care of because we are submitting in God's will. We have no control over things around us, but our control is our submission to his will. Amen? Yeah. James 4.16. As it is... Oh, I read that already, right? <laughs> James 4.6. But he gives us more grace. This scripture says on James 4.6, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Amen. So we should not be boastful on things that we do, but we should always be submitting ourselves to God's will. Watch this. Uh, I'll read Isaiah 4, 12, 15. How have you fallen from heaven? Morning star, son of dawn, you have cast down on earth you who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned in the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Saphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. See? Lucifer himself was so boastful. Let us not be boastful in the things that we do. We want to be independent from God. We want him to be our savior. But we do not want his lordship over us. 
that will always be a challenge for us believers. We will, our, our words will betray our, I mean, our actions will betray what we say. We, want, we say we follow Christ, but in reality, we want to do things on our own. Uh, Genesis 3, 5 to 7. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing all, all good and evil. Evil. Yep. We want to be like God. We want to... We, we say, we will follow you, God. We will serve you, God. But we do it on, an own, or on our own terms. We do it when it is most convenient for us. We go on church, not on time, but on our own time. We volunteer, not because it is needed, but because it is convenient for us to do it. I pity those wonder seekers who move from church to church on the gist of serving the Lord. But in reality, they are serving the Lord on their own terms. You know what happened to uh, uh, Willow Creek and Harvest Church. Some of you might have noticed, oh, this used to be Harvest. And all of a sudden, it's a different name because they are being scattered. And we, we talk a lot about these things in, uh, in, uh, in Trinity and one of the huge concerns is the fact that a lot of those members will just fall away from faith. Will just not go, will just not be Christians because of what happened. You see, following Christ is not about somebody. It's not about a charismatic leader or another man. It's Christ himself. These people... Matter of fact, they say a lot of those who went to Willow Church are transfer uh, believers. They just transfer there because there's coffee. Or there's, it's like a mall. It's so nice, so big. And that's why they go there. But apparently, if you ask them, how many converts do you have? They really don't have a a good number of converts because a lot of them are just transfer. It's a transfer growth. And these believers, they might say all day long, all night long that they are following Christ, they want to follow Christ, but the fact is they are following Christ on their own terms. Now, if they don't see the coffee in there, they will not be following Christ anymore. That's the sad part. We want the benefits of being a Christian, but we do not do what you ought to do following Christ. Amen? It's sad. Verse 17, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Wow. What does this mean? If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin to them. Well, we'll try to understand this. For me, probably, you can say, if a brother is hungry, you know that you're supposed to give him food and you didn't do it, then it is a sin to you. Right? A couple of months ago, I talked about, about the uh, conduct of a believer. And if Brother Brian is, is here, he's a deep sea swimmer. If somebody's drowning, he's a good swimmer. He doesn't save him then it is a sin to him, right? Because he knows he has the ability to do it. He's supposed to do it. 
But what if James was beside somebody who was drowning? Will he be blamed to, for not saving that guy who is 200 pounds heavier than him? Of course not, right? But let's look at what he, James talked about on the begin, uh, on other parts of his book, right? He said, uh, he said on James 1, 19, 27, remember he talked about listening and doing? So this is probably part of it. If you listen and you didn't do it, it is a sin you know already that you ought to do what you are supposed to do, and you don't do it, then the Bible says it is a sin. It is what he says here, unless I'm reading it wrong, right? James 2, 1 to 13 talks about favoritism. Man, if you are playing favoritism, especially in the body of Christ, then you know that it is not good, then it is a sin. James 2, 14 to 25 talks about acting on our faith. If we are not acting on our faith, I think this is a stretch, but it says it is a sin. You have faith, act on your faith. Amen? James 2, 14 to 25, I mean, 3, 1 to 12 talks about us not taming the tongue. You know already that you should tame your tongue and then you just gossip here and there. That is obviously a sin. James 13 to 18 talks about the two kinds of wisdom. If you're taking wisdom from below, you know already that it is a sin. Amen? Matthew 23, 23 Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Man, brothers and sisters, God's word, the Bible, gives us a lot of wisdom, a lot of things. It opens our eyes to the right things and to the wrong things. We come here day in and day out, week in, week out. We listen to the word. It is explained to us. I'm so amazed at how the word is being explained here in this church. You will not believe how much teaching we are gathering here. We are, it's, it's a blessing indeed. I've been, I have gone home for numerous years already, and I teach on, on churches in, our, in, in the mountains, and you will be surprised how blessed they are. And the things that I'm teaching are the things that I'm learning from Pastor Jose, from Brother Rafael, from Sister Anne, from the people in this church. Believe me, we have sufficient knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and above all, we have this Holy Spirit. Let us not keep it to ourselves. Our life as followers of Christ on earth is just a speck of eternity. It's just a speck of eternity. Let's make the most out of it. You have a gift, share it. You don't have, I mean, Brother Lawrence will live for 120 years. 120 years is nothing, nothing compared to eternity spent with Christ. You're going to school, study hard now. Before you know it, you're done. You're making more money than I'm making. And you'll give me your first check. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So these sufferings that we have on earth, you think it's, it's a long suffering? No, it's just a speck of eternity. Share your faith. You don't have all day. You don't have all years, you know. It's just a speck of eternity, brothers and sisters. Before you know it, you cannot stand. 
You cannot keep up with what other people are doing. So let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. While we have strength. While we have strength. Amen? Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's pray.